Welcome art lovers to the art vlog. I'm approaching the National Gallery to take a sneak peek inside the um, new exhibition on St. Francis of Assisi. I don't know much about what this exhibition is going to offer so I'm really intrigued to go inside. Um, I know the basic facts about St. Francis Assisi's life as some of you might do, that he was born into a wealthy family in the late 1100s and that he gave up his life um, of riches for a life of poverty. Um, he founded the order, the, San, the Franciscan order, and the Paul Clares, a female equivalent. And two years after he died, he was um, canonised as a saint. And he's, 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 he's absolutely um, provided a fascinating and compelling subject matter for artists across European and indeed world Christian art ever since. So I'm hoping this show will will explore the range, if you like, of the of, of, of St. Francis Assisi in his life. But beyond that, I don't know very much. And it's sometimes lovely to come into a show without much hype, without much, many expectations. This show is on until the 30th of July. It's a freebie. And I absolutely love the fact that that the National Gallery are producing more of these really valuable free the exhibitions. Um, so come and join me as we head inside the um, National Repository of our art collection to explore the exhibition at St. Francis of Assisi. I thought the first room does a really good job of tying together the two themes of the whole exhibition. The uh, Francis as a historical figure and also as an inspirer of artists across the um, centuries. It's really dramatic entrance with the Anthony Gormley um, figure of St Francis, sculpture of St Francis, complete with stigmata. And it's a sort of well curated dramatic entrance that stops you in your tracks as you walk through through the door. Um, and it transports you straight away to the other world. I actually thought one of the weaker works of the exhibition was this one, um, Richard Long's Walk for St Francis, which failed to really transport me to a CC. But um, this painting, a uh, masterpiece by uh, Zubaran from the National Gallery, St Francis in Meditation, more than makes up for that. And it's a, it's a piece that will, will, will transfix you, I think. You're then transported through a door um, to a uh, series of works by Sassetta which form a visual biography of St Francis and it gives the uninitiated an understanding of some of the key moments in his life. Um, seven panels are displayed here and it's well positioned at the start. I was just a tiny bit gutted that that, that these seven owned by the National couldn't be um, reunited with the eight from Chantilly in France and also the central panel from Tuscany. From the Sassetta, as we are taken right back to St Francis' life and just after. Claims of posthumous miracles are rumoured to have been painted onto a board that held the dead saint's body as it was being washed. We're then taken back to the very human um, Francis. Uh, we see two surviving um, copies of his handwriting, particularly taken um, with the letter to Brother Leo, where you can really, really hear his voice. Um, and then we're also shown how his reputation spread both within Italy and beyond the boundaries. This, this chronicle by Matthew Paris is one of the first mentions outside of his native Italy. And I think this section of the exhibition is really important because what follows is obviously artistic interpretations of the Francis which get further and further away in some ways from the human being. Prepared to be electrified art lovers in this section, the mystical Francis. It's one of the absolute highlights of the exhibition and it pinpoints the counter-reformation triggered by the Catholic response to the Protestant Reformation and kicked off at the Council of Trent. Um, 
as the point where the art moves beyond attempts at biography to new, more mystical paintings. Um, a second burst, if you like, of San Franciscan art. This monster by Murillo is, is, is a spectacular a full-size piece where St Francis embraces the crucified Christ and this Caravaggio is probably my favourite work of art in the whole exhibition. It's come from America and it's absolutely beautiful. The exhibition then moves away from those semi-chronological couple of rooms to show a really eclectic range of work from across the centuries and styles um, which celebrates St Francis of Assisi's famed, famed communion with nature. He famously preached to birds and um, although you know there, this theme really worked actually for me, the room held together um, and it really allowed you to see the influence of art um, uh, the influence of Francis, sorry, as art has changed. And we see like pre-Raphaelite works, Arte Povera works from Italy, um, Stanley Spencer and others, um, all celebrating some uh, Fr Francis' um, relationship with nature, obviously which also makes him in some ways a very modern state in, in this in the time of environmental destruction. The final room focuses on the radical St Francis and the real wow moment is this incredibly uncomfortable looking habit um, that St Francis apparently wore and is now stored in Santa Croce in, in, in Florence. It's an incredible moment to see that St Francis' commitment to poverty, especially because there was actually some Franciscan monks in the audience. We also see how Francis reached out to Islam by meeting the Sultan of Egypt and we get to see another um, artefact, um, the horn that was apparently given by the Sultan to St Francis after his visit. And from then on, we see images which reflect the radical nature of St Francis in his commitment to poverty, but also his interest of, of the position of women, amongst other things. And the final room, I can't remember actually what it was called. Um, I th don't think it was called Francis Day, but it shows us the enduring place of St Francis of Assisi in modern day popular culture.
well our lovers I really enjoyed that show actually um, I thought it was a calming show and a really uplifting one it's lovely sometimes when you don't expect much from an exhibition and it surpasses your expectations not in a negative way but I thought it was really beautifully curated um, yes there were some renaissance greats like Botticelli and um, Fra Angelico yes there was a wonderful masterpiece by Caravaggio on loan from America which is a real highlight as well and um, many other paintings uh, and El Greco which is gorgeous um, all of which were obviously focused on the life of St Francis of Assisi and his influence so one of the absolute highlights was the um, was the, the the closeness you got to St Francis, like these wonderful relics that you could, you saw um, through facsimiles of letters which which were produced in his lifetime, um, through to some very very early works produced close after his death, including this wonderful early work which was apparently produced on the board where his body was washed after death and then um and then you're sort of taken through the portrayal of Francis of Assisi across the history of art and I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it actually he's obviously an a, a figure for our times in terms of his environmentalism his kind of um his pacifism um his 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 concern for the rights of men and women and so the exhibition was arguing he is a very um, contemporary figure in many ways but it's really clear how he's fascinated artists from his his lifetime all the way through to the present day there was a couple of pieces I didn't show you because they're still under copyright and I'm always a bit careful of that so you can hopefully come and see those yourself if you if, if, if you're able to come to the exhibition two other highlights as well more modern ones um, I absolutely love this piece by the Mexican artist Jose Clemente Orzoco and also the one by Stanley Spencer as well um, just just like a really great exhibition which which taught you so much about this very important figure in Christianity and also explored how his portrayal has changed and developed as artistic trends have have moved from the Renaissance to the Baroque into the 19th century and on to the modern day so I do thoroughly recommend it. It's a small show, but it's not tiny. You know, I spent probably a good 40, 50 minutes in there. It's fantastic that it's free. What a, what a great thing from the, um, from the National Gallery. And also it's on all the way until the 30th of July. And I would say, you know, it's a more cohesive exhibition than the, the, the mega enjoyable imp after impressionism, um, inventing modern art upstairs, although I thoroughly enjoyed that too. So if you can maybe do a double header with at least a little snack in between, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Don't uh, forget to subscribe to the Art Block, hit that notification bell for reviews of upcoming exhibitions across London southeast of England and beyond.